Hello everybody, I'm in the Littlewood, also known as Martin, and E3 week is over, and lots of you on my Facebook, Reddit, AMA, Twitch page have all been asking what I thought of it, so here are some of my highlights. So let's start off with the Microsoft press conference this year. There's only really two things that actually stood out to me and care about, and the first one is Project Spark. So as someone who's always wanted to create video games myself, I've tried things like RPG Maker, which was the easy route, and I've even had a couple of half ass dabbles in C-sharp coding. So this game, or I should really call it a tool, actually does all of the legwork for me. I can take a blank canvas, I can slap some scenery onto it, whether it's small hills or giant mountains, and then I can start to choose things like the season, the weather, the time of day, and I can also start carving moats or anything else that I'd like into it, popping up bridges, and my ideas just suddenly spring into life. And once the scene is set, you can actually drop AI into this game. So whether it's a rock, it can be a person like an NPC, and you can actually give them different traits. And I'm really interested to see how this thing is going to develop. Is it literally just, this is aggressive, this is passive? Or can you actually go in and say, right, this is the radius that will start attacking you, he'll become a companion, can you code it any further than what the game has already provided? I'm really interested to see how this can develop. And once your masterpiece is completed, you're actually going to be able to share it on Xbox Live with all your friends, with randoms, I'm sure there'll be some kind of voting system so you can find out the most popular ones in a similar fashion to Halo Maps. But not only can you share games that you've created, you can also share movies as well. You can create entire machinimas inside of this which I thought was genius and you can tell the story exactly the way you want to. Other than that, the only other thing that excited me in the Microsoft press conference was not a game, again, no games I'm bothered about, I'm just excited about tools and this one is native support for Twitch streaming. Now there's been some failed attempts of this recently from things like Blops 2 on the Xbox 360 didn't work particularly well but this actually looks really impressive. So you're gonna have a chat on the right hand side of the screen and on the left is where the game sits. Now you lose a little bit of height but the balance between the two is actually really really good and I'm only left with the questions how do you fire off adverts if you're a Twitch partner and do this for a living and also how do you speak to the chat? Do they just assume that you're gonna be on camera and using your voice or is there a way that you can just plug in a keyboard and tap away in the chat? That's what I want to see. So on to the Sony presentation and I really appreciated the fact that they just got on with it straight away Away. They just did like five seconds of promo, flash to white, and bang! There it was. That's my chips on the table. Raise me if you can, bitches. There was the PS4, and it actually looks quite nice. And also something to note as well, I don't think people realise quite how small the console is. If you look at some infographics and see how it compares to previous gen consoles and the Xbox One and the Wii U, it's actually quite tiny. So that's going to look great in my living room, but one thing that I'm never going to be able to get from E3 or buy in a shop is an adorable little Asian man who came on later on in the show, and when everybody applauded him, he had the most infectious giggle ever. That was just for me a really funny moment. He's just such an infectious laugh. He's loving life and I just want one in my living room. I want to sit in there and whenever I applaud him like you know clapping a light on he'll just sit there and giggle and then it will make my day better. Then came Squeenix. We all love Square Enix. You love them. I love them. I was a little bit worried to begin with though because the footage that they showed during the press conference was very very quick timey. I thought oh no it's going down the movie route. I'm just gonna get a press square occasionally but no it was okay. I've looked at some other footage since where they actually show off the combat system. My god, does that thing look fluid. It looks really, really amazing. Graphically, it's amazing. And the thing that people have been pointing out as well is the fact that there's no kids in this. There's no kids, there's no sort of late teens. Everybody looks either like 20 and above or 30 and above, which is kind of a change for the series. And then Squeenix did something that Valve have never done, and that is count to three. <laughs> Basically, they announced Kingdom Hearts 3, which is a franchise, admittedly, that I've never gotten into. But they're remaking the first one in HD. I'm definitely going to try that out. There's been some more footage of it shown. On the topic of HD remakes as well, Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X 2 are looking lovely, of course. And I'm very excited for this because I've never finished 10, and it's actually my favourite title from the series. Unless Final Fantasy IX's Tetra Master, the card game, got its own game, then that would just win my life every day, forever. Then, of course, I'm totally excited by the fact that the PlayStation 4 is going to be an offline device. It seems strange to even have to mention that. That should just be an obvious thing, but obviously other consoles and other companies are deciding to go a different route at the minute. <laughs> Xbox One! Oh, sorry, I was saying Xbox One. The frog in my throat. On top of that, you can do whatever you'd like with your games. You can burn them, you can throw them in a skip, let somebody else find them, they can still play it anyway. You can trade them in at a store, you can give them to a friend, it doesn't matter if they're in your family or not. You can just do it. And 
also the fact that it's £100 cheaper. We're not touching nearly half a grand for a gaming console. Come on. And then the final part of the Sony presentation, the game that I'm most excited for from E3 this year, and that is Destiny. So this is brought to you by the creators of Halo, Bungie, and Activision, who have brought you many a Call of Duty title. This is an MMO FPS, and those are six letters that I've always wanted to see in the same place. And I just love the fact that I can be out in my day-to-day -day life, and I look at my phone, and I've got a message there. And it's like, hey, guess what? There's bad guys at this place, or there's intel at this place. you got to go get it, you and your squad, you and your brothers and sisters. And I'm like... I'm going to RSVP this, yes. And I think the main reason that I'm excited for this game is just because it actually looks fun. The guys that were playing it were probably the only people who got on stage during E3, during a big press conference, and actually had fun. They were having banter, things went wrong, like a guy died during the boss battle, but they just laughed it off and carried on playing anyway. It just seemed like a really warm and happy experience that I totally want to be a part of. So those are all of the things that I love from E3. Just a couple of little ones to mention as well. The fact that there's now a 1080p resolution for the Oculus Rift. Watch Dogs, we've got a little bit of an update on still looking amazing south park the stick of truth still looks hilarious definitely going to be getting that and nintendo have basically just rehashed all their old titles and brought them to us again yawn let me know in the comment section below whether you agree or disagree with them were you excited or disappointed by anything at e3 let me know we'll have a discussion about it and i shall see you all in a little bit bye Don't you like my dance? Don't you like my pants? You'll never see them unless you romance me. <laughs> oh dear, I love mic checks. I love mic checks. Have you seen this, by the way? Summer Boyfriend Wanted. Uh, Nomi is currently looking for a Bristol-based male. This is a temporary three-month deal. I hope we get paid for this. Candidates should have a patient character coupled with an enthusiastic and adventurous personality. Also, you have to be able to demonstrate a unique talent. Green eyes and some form of transport is desirable but not essential. For further information, please email summerboyfriend at outlook.com. Wow, like, she must be about 40 if she's still using Outlook Express. Like, honestly. So, there's no, there's no information about her. It's just want, want, want. She doesn't give anything. That's why I don't want to do that. And the fact that I already have a girlfriend as well. But that's not important.